rules, codes, and spoken protocols, and many others are the keys to unlock destinies and activate blessings. People have been deluded to substitute the principles of God with that of man and have landed behind the wrong doors with the wrong keys, frustrated, dejected, and embittered. Here comes the key to overturn it all. From the author of the groundbreaking book, Workshop to Showroom, comes yet another incredibly mind-blowing book titled Palace Protocol. Watch Wait, out for chapters please. like Don't Lose Your Staff, Rules of Engagement, Unspoken Protocols, Who is Leading You, Not My Condition But Position, Atmosphere for Miracles, The Spirit of Absalom, My Judas, Wisdom It's Seen, Tomorrow Today, and many more chapters dedicated to preparing you for a great harvest while enlightening you. Lives are switched on. I am always excited on Sundays because Sundays here at Bridge Ministries promises to be a wonderful time. Today, we are going to start off with our elite service as usual. Last week, the man of God shared on seasons and times. And he explained that to know your season and to know your time, you should know if you're a farmer or you're a seed. Now, he's, he, yes, last week he talked about being a farmer. As a farmer, you should know three things. You should study the weather, you study the soil, and then you study the seed. Today promises to be an exciting service in the presence of the Lord. As usual, we are live on Facebook, we are live on Zoom, and we are live on YouTube. Please call your friends and call your family because your life will not be the same. Stay tuned and stay glued. Be blessed.
Oh! 
touched all over Couldn't find nobody Looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody great Nobody, 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 nobody greater than you all over we touched all over So this morning, we want to appreciate his faithfulness of our lives. Hallelujah. So great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. Change up. 
and you're always providing, providing for me. Yeah. So great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace.
Great is the mercy of the everlasting Father. Great is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the I am that I am, the ancient of days, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Great is the one that was, that is, and that is to come. Great is the one that has no beginning and has no end. The one that knows all, the one that sees all, and the one that does all. Great is his mercy. Great is his patience. Great is his peace. Great is his love. Great is his understanding that formed the world from nothing into something. Great is his majesty that created the oceans and the stars. Great is the everlasting father. Great is he that died on the cross and arose on the third day triumphantly. Great is the one that walked among men and yet laid down his life for them. Great is the one that once saw the frailty of man but yet protected him clothed him loved him cared for him was kind to him gentle to him great is his mercy that when the enemy came towards us in the middle of the night to snatch our breath from us he protected us he stretched forth his hands and said, No devil, you will not have this one. She may have gone against me. He may have gone against me. But my mercy is everlasting. My mercies are renewed every morning. And despite even in their sin, despite they are lost, despite they are confused, I will not abandon them. His mercy that never forsakes us. His mercy that never leaves us. His mercy that never abandons us. Great is His mercy. Great is His love. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to stretch forth your faith. Wherever you are, in your homes, in your couch, wherever you sit, stretch forth your faith with me. Wherever you are this morning, just stretch forth your faith. That no matter the difficulty you are going through, the Lord is still with you. No matter the hardships, the Lord is still with you. In the midst of the disappointment, the Lord is still with you. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. He has not abandoned you. And he will not give the enemy power over you. It does not matter how they have gathered. The Bible says, surely they shall gather, but not by me. It says when the enemy gathers together, the Lord sits in heavenly places and he laughs you will not be afraid by the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks at night only behold with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked only with your eyes shall you see their tremblings every arrow shot against you is shot back towards them Every plan they decided and orchestrated against you is destroyed. The Lord is your shield and buckler. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your reigning king. The Lord is your fortress. The Lord is your shield. When the enemy comes against me like a flood, I would not be afraid. The Lord is my shield and my buckler. The Lord is my strength. It's a strength of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid of? Though the enemy encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. When you have not been at the point of death, you may not value life. 
you may not value life. You may not know what the Lord has done for you. I know what God has done for me. And this morning, I hope you would join me just appreciate Him. Because if it was not for His mercy and His faithfulness, it was not for His tender mercy, for His loving kindness, I do not know where I would have been, nor what I would have done. May the Lord show you mercy this morning. May that door that you have knocked on for years that has failed to open, open unto you this morning. May that job offer come through for you. May that business deal come through for you. May that contract be awarded to you. May that marriage date be set. May that womb be filled with a child. Whatever you think is impossible, I came this morning as a servant of the Most High God. You will receive that miracle. I bring you hope. I bring you joy. I bring you peace. And I speak standing on the pulpit of my father, F.D. Ali, with the backing of all the pastors in this house, that grace be released to you wherever you are this morning that grace be released from the throne room of God to fill you up that grace be released to whoever needs it whoever has lost hope and does not know where to turn to let God grant you grace grace to carry on in these difficult times that job that was taken from you another one is about to open that opportunity that you lost, another one is about to open. Grace. 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 Receive grace, somebody. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, wonderful worshipers. This morning, I bring you blessings from Bridge Ministries Auditorium, Awoshi, Anya, from wherever you are watching us. <clears throat> I bring you blessings from the father of the house, Reverend Francis D. Ali, a man I respect so much. I want to honor him this morning for the good works he has done, for the good seeds he has sown. I salute all the pastors of the house, each and every one of you, and all the workers that work in the vineyard of the Most High. Hallelujah. This morning I bring you a continuation of the message, Seasons and Times. Seasons and Times. Last week I explained to you that there are seasons and there are times. And seasons are secular and times are personal. So you can be there and Think that you have missed a season when in truth you've missed a time. I said there will always be seasons but there will not always be time. And I said that if I don't buy a sports car before I am 40, perhaps it's not a good idea. I can buy a Range Rover when I'm 80. I can buy a Land Cruiser when I'm 90 and nobody's going to ask questions. But if I buy a two-seater sports car, if I buy a Lamborghini Aventador, and I come and park in my 80s, even get 
getting out of the car will be a problem because if you know that car it is very low and at 80 sometimes your, your knees begin to give up on you if I'm not careful they have to carry me into the car and carry me out of the car hallelujah the speed at which the car moves can even let your BP go up because at 80 who here am she share yeah that's what the Bible said what the wife of what of your youth if you are if you marry at 75 skills need to are it is not working some things are for youth only hallelujah hallelujah yeah so the season of marriage can come back to you but there are some things if you don't if you don't if you don't do it when you are young when you are old it, look there may come a time i may not want to wear a red shoe in my 50s i may not want to i may be doing some deep i may feel i want to wear black shoe throughout that is fine But when I am in my youth, red shoe, they will say me shady. Yeah. They will say me shady. Oh, you see, when you are old and you are wearing a red shoe, you say, I can cry away per life. When you are young, nobody complains. Watch your eye. Why shame me this kid? Now that you have six children, six children, and you are 65, you even have grandchildren. Now, I've been able to say in this case, the season has come, the time is gone. So I explained to you last week that the difficulties in understanding seasons and times. Where you have to know what to do, when to do it. You do what is needed before what is wanted and most of you are doing what is what is wanted at the time it is needed i was advising a young man recently and i said you are about 25 years old and you have given up on education people are 55 years old and they've gone back to school do you want to wait till you are 55 before you go do you know what it takes to be in school at 55 when your children are calling you in class, that anape wo konwe in jiska. When you are going in the morning, your child is telling you that they said if he doesn't pay his school fees tomorrow, he shouldn't come to school. You sit in the class and by your mind is out. You, you, how many old people go to school and get first class? At a certain age, when you go back to school, first class, oh no, you don't own pre you don't pray with the young people. They won't fight. Boom rain, they won't fight. So some things you do it at a certain time. A certain time. A certain time. Look, there's a time to serve. There's a word. A time. There are some times, look, sometimes, you know, you, you, you wonder. In your 50s, you, are, you now want to serve somebody. In your 50s, now you are looking for someone to understand you. When? When? When you have wasted your youth. What about? Oh, man of God, use me for whatever. What can we use you for? A pronoun to mean privy. What can cry is a problem. Evangelism, if you move from here to here, who's who go to jail here? What bread? what should we do with you the season has come but the time is gone you see we, you have to understand something that we have a limited time on earth and over the past one week i have understood it better than any point in time in my life our time is limited our time is limited and you may not know how much time you have left so if you find something to do do it well, do it right, and do it now. Because you wouldn't want to wake up tomorrow and realize you are in a box six feet beneath the ground. 
the greatest illusion of a man in his youth is that he will never grow old. The greatest illusion of a man in his old age is that he won't die now. Only the dead know the reality. <laughs> yeah. Only the dead know the reality that I bear you. I said, if people know how to avoid mistakes, there will nothing be like teenage pregnancy or unwanted pregnancy. Because you are the person now, oh, didn't you know that one times one is one? Or one plus one is two? Oh, na, na, ma, ma, ja, ma, sa. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Seasons and times. Last week, I told a very interesting lesson. And something peculiar came to mind. And I said that they are farmers and they are seeds. And I want to take time to do this series on seasons and times because in as much as I want to speed it up, speed up the process, I'm realizing that there are a lot of things that people need to understand. So today I'm going to tackle on a few things um, under season time so last week if you followed i said something like if you are a farmer you have to understudy the weather good i I love the keys keep that key for me steady the weather a farmer has to know the environment a farmer has to know the seed a farmer has to know the soil a farmer has to know the right time the farmer should know that the way the weather is looking is going to rain next month it's going to rain next week the farmer must predict must decide a farmer who is ahead of the trend ahead of the times is the farmer that succeeds and that most of you are not succeeding because you are behaving like farmers when you are seeds it is very interesting for you to note that it is one thing to understand where you are it's a different thing to understand who you are you see when you are a farmer you are behaving like a seed you're very stupid and vice versa if you are a seed and you're behaving like a farmer i am not saying it is not possible to be a farmer to be a seed but if you are a seed you have to understand your focus is on a farmer if you are a farmer your focus is on a weather so people will ask me pastor charles i don't know what to do i am in a situation where i don't know where to turn to and i ask them where are you and who are you because if you are a seed you go to your farm and say farmer i need to be planted and if you're a farmer you look at the weather and you 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 investigate you research I was speaking to one of my daughters last week and he said you know Pastor Charles, i don't want to worry you you see um i want to come and see you but i think it's going to worry you. i said i said god in his infinite wisdom when he started creation said that billions of sperms were to go for a race and one should win and the rest should die so your very best was an inconvenience to a multitude of people what makes you think if your best caused others to die your life should be a convenience to everybody else. I said, you are not eager. You are not hungry. I said, Jesus was teaching in a temple. And somebody wanted his healing and couldn't get inside. And he and his friend decided that we will remove the roof from the building. You bet too zingly, you know, and get inside. I said, Jesus was walking and going about his day and a woman with the issue of blood said look this man no matter what i want he won't give me if i stop he won't stop him the multitude is so much i don't even need his company i need the miracle so i will grab the helm of his garment because i will behold i will take the power whether he likes it or not are you hungry are you thirsty or are you comfortable I said, Zacchaeus said, I have to see this man. So what did he do? He climbed a tree. When you are a seed, your problem is your farmer. Most people in this world are not well planted. I told someone recently, I said, when you are a farmer, you pray to God. When you are a seed, you go and just the farmer's leg, Papa. Now you for planting you because I'm looking up to you. 
when you're a farmer, you look to the weather. When you're a seed, you look at the farmer. Most people are seeds and they're looking at the weather. I told a friend of mine, I said, hey, stop praying. Go and ask your father, what should I do? Because some issues don't require prayer. It requires counsel. So prayers God will not listen. Because it is not coming from the farmer. It's coming from the seed. God doesn't deal with seeds. He deals with farmers. Kabosha. Give me the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. Let me explain something to you. This thing, I will spend time a bit on it. But you must understand me very well. Look. This dawn a week ago, a week ago, this dawn a week ago, I was wrestling with the enemy and I could not sleep. Sleep had been taken from my eye. Sleep had been taken from my eye. At 3 a.m., I could not sleep. I picked my phone. I said, hey, my bon in I said, hey, why am I wasting my time? When, when you have a father, there are some battles you don't fight. Kabush, I took my phone. I said, Papa, all is not well, oh. All is not well. In Danemba, I want to call. It's not going well. 3 a.m., I sent my father a message. What? what, should, what? I should do what? I should now pray. Cabo. Say, hey, some of you are doing dry fasting. That is not necessary. There are some prayers God will not answer to you. He will answer to your father. Look, a daughter of mine was doing something on her phone about her education. She had tried it over and over and over and over. The thing wasn't going. Then I asked her, what are you doing on your phone? She said, I've tried this thing out for 24 hours. No working. I said, give me the phone. Why she gave me the phone? I said, press your back, back. The thing went. He said, hey, what did you do? I said, there is something your father knows in an instant that you will know in a decade. You either submit to learn or go through a decade to learn. It is up to you. I took the phone. I said, Papa, it is not well. I told one of my daughters, I said, look, some battles, you know. <laughs> when I came to church, he prayed for me. I was feeling better. Then I went home. And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Then I felt a strong attack. I said, let's keep praying. We are praying, we are praying, we are praying. Then the attack came in a different wave. I said, no, this one, if I joke with it, God will say, look at what I leaned over my wife. I said, call my father. Tell him something is going on. I didn't want to say, let me remove my shirt. Devil, devil. Why should I wrestle with the devil my father defeated 10 years ago? What, what kind of a hala is that? Some of you are struggling to find some wars that you don't need to. Give me the book of Second Kings. And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets, a certain woman cried out to Elisha, Saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant fear the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. No, no. Give me the first one. Your servant. Your servant. Your servant. Man of God, your servant. Fear the Lord. Your servant was a God-fearing man of God. He knew God. He loved God. He worked for God. And he served on you. But he was a debtor. Or your kafir. He had nothing to his name. He was owing. He was struggling. Maybe he didn't tell you. But I, the wife, I am telling you that Papa, your son, was in debt before he died. Maybe by his pride, he couldn't tell you. But either way, I'm telling you, the guy was owing. Elisha told the woman, what do you have? We all know the story. I have nothing but a jar of oil. He said, go home. And he said, the woman had always what they needed. What they lacked was a word of the farmer. 
Why did the servant not go to Elisha when he was alive? If the Bible said he feared God, definitely he knew God. Definitely he prayed for God. If the, if, the, if, the, if the Bible said your servant, definitely the man knew Elisha. The man had a relationship with Elisha, but the man didn't tell Elisha. Sometimes your pride can catch you from your grace. When I start dealing here with the sins of a seed, you will understand why some of you are where you are. Your pride can catch you off the grace. Look, anyone that is of authority is under authority. There is no authority that is in of itself except the authority of God. Every authority is come from somewhere. So every authority you have comes from somewhere else. The authority the police has stems from the executive power. The executive power stems from the president who is the head of the executive. The president's power stands from the people. The people's power comes from their creator. Every power has where it is connected to. When you deny the power under which you are, no power will obey to you. That's why the, the demon said, he said, Paul, I know. Peter, I know. Who are you? Why? Because Paul has submitted to Christ. Peter has submitted to Christ. Who have you submitted to? It is not that I don't know the power in the name of Jesus. No, but you cannot use the power under which Jesus resides if you have not submitted to that power first. Tell me how powerful you are. And I'll tell you the power under which you are under. Your level of submission determines your level of control. Don't tell me how powerful you are. Tell me how submissive you are. You cannot take power under which you cannot submit under. Jesus said, the son of man, lay down his life. Next week, I'll go deeper into authority. I don't understand my message. I don't understand my message. Second Kings 4 is one of my most shocking scriptures in the Bible. Shocking. Shocking scriptures in the Bible. Second Kings chapter 4. I am shocked. When I hear the scripture, I am shocked. A certain woman of the wives and the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. That even means that Elisha may not even have known the man has died. The moment to tell the father, Your servant is dead. And you know. You, Elisha, you know that your servant feared the Lord. That means the man was not a fake man of God. He was not a fake man of God. He was not a fake servant. He, he, he was not a man that was disobedient or a rebellion. No. He was a faithful. That means you can faithfully serve under somebody and yet not profit from the anointing. Because when you should see them as a farmer, you see yourself as a farmer. The man was praying to God. When Elisha had the key. Elisha had the key. It took the wife to say that, well, he's gone. As for me, I want my solution now. So I am going to the man of God and telling the man of God, that, hey, man of God, are you, are you a man of God? Your servant is dead. It is bad enough that he was in debt. After being in debt, he has died. And he died with the debt. And worse enough, the children has come to take the the, 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 the debt. They are picking the children as collateral for the debt. Man of God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Is this the God we serve? And let me tell you something. Go to verse 2. Let me, let me tell you my, my surprise. Do you know Elisha didn't ask the man any question? No, don't mind question. No. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? I mean, he, the question was not about the servant. What do you want? Tell me. What do you have in the house? A 
And she said, your maid servant has nothing but a jar of oil. Do you know Elisha didn't pray for the woman? He just gave the woman instruction. All along, Elisha had the anointing to solve their problem. All along, Elisha had the answer to the problem. All along, they themselves had the key to the problem. Because they had the oil they needed. They had the anointing there. Let me take it, let me take it to another feather. Let, let me take it a step further. It wasn't just that they had the money they needed. They had the anointing they needed. The oil, I want to use this as the regard for the anointing. You see, it wasn't the oil. They, hey, they can't eat the oil. Hear me. They can't eat the oil. They have to what? Use the oil to make money. Now, I believe one of the revelational deep versions of that was that the oil stood for an anointing because we know that anointing comes when oil is poured so i believe that the woman even the what the husband with the woman the woman the wife the wife the wife of the man of god had the anointing for wealth but it was pending activation what she didn't have was the, was the instruction the instruction to activate that anointing she was anointed of god she had the covering she had the mandate but she lacked the instruction. And I wonder if the woman was disanointed, how much more the man? How much more the servant? How much more the man of God? Oh yeah, he died a debtor. Don't die a debtor. There is nothing more shame than at your death. When you are dead, instead of your children counting your property, they are counting your, your, your creditors. Instead of your children sharing the money you left behind, they are sharing the debt you left behind. You, your living could not bring them blessing. Your debt has brought them curse. Minister Andy, if the wife was that anointed if the wife had the jar of oil the anointing the mantle over her life in her household her house was anointed what more was the man so why did he die of death why i wouldn't be even surprised when a can cracker who wouldn't tell no a can crack couldn't tell But he had upon his life the anointing and the unction. The Bible said that what Sarah received what strength. I mean, Sarah all along had what it takes. Do you know how Sarah got the strength? It was by a word. Kabosha. It was by a word. That is why faith cometh by what? Hearing. Faith cometh by what? hearing so even strength can come from a word activation a word a word from a farmer can change your life a word from a father can transform it all sarah needed was a word that the angel said that nine months from now a season from now you will take seed and the bible said that sarah received strength all the woman needed was activation on what to use the anointing for she had the anointing she had the oil she had the solution what she lacked was a word from a farmer that's all she needed the man of God didn't give her the oil the man of God didn't give her the solution the man of God just gave her a word that's why when you have a farmer in your life and the farmer speaks hear me hear me hear me look look hear me some of you hear me some of you Sometimes you don't need a farmer. Eh? Oh, fathers of today, when Bill Gates even is giving his children, you know, inheritance. My father, how I wish I was Bill Gates' child. Fear, you you we have Christian man's child by God's design, Fanisa, because even Bill Gates was also someone's child. Why don't you become the Bill Gates so your children can inherit? 
But hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. The greatest, listen, and this is the reason why even a man as Bill Gates has decided not to give his wealth to his children. The greatest asset a farmer or a father can give to a seed is not money. It's an instruction. It's a word. That is why when David was about to die, when he called Solomon, Solomon, one of the most greatest kings ever known, David called Solomon and gave him just about four sets of instructions. Very simple. And that was enough. That was enough. If you look in the Bible, every time God was angry with somebody, it wasn't because the person did something. Look, God was more angry, not by the sins of the Jews, but by disobeying his instruction. It is futile to pick a farmer and not listen to his words. Hey, it's a big error. Imagine when the woman went home, she took the oil and fried it a yam with it. She, man of God, be. She, no, okay, can. I should go and borrow vessel. You didn't you hear that we said we were owing already? Maba said to me for Papa, give me good advice. You said, I should what? Go and now borrow feather and pour oil. The oil is in a jar. Sometimes the instructions from the farmer may not make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. The strength is not in the wisdom, the strength is in your obedience. It's your obedience that activates it. It's not the wisdom. Everybody knows by common sense, if you have a jar of oil, no matter what you do, if you pour it out, you won't get more than one jar. So we all know that, Sebi, what the man said doesn't make sense. But the test was not in the sense of what was said. The test was in the obedience of what was said. Most times your test as a seed is not in your action. Your greatest test is in your obedience. God didn't test Moses. Hear me. God didn't test Moses by whether he could bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses' test was whether he could do exactly as God said. So the day Moses broke the instruction, God said, it's enough. God, why didn't God say that? Oh, but you were, at least you've done it. No. To God, it wasn't what you did. It is what you refused to do. It wasn't what Moses did, it's what he left out. I ask you again, are you a seed or are you a farmer? Because if you're a farmer, you plant seeds and you plant yourself. If you're a seed, you are planted. And oftentimes, most people are afraid to be seeds because they are afraid to be used. They said, man of God, I have served before and it didn't end well. Man of God, I have given all my best before and it didn't go so well. I was taken for granted. I was brutalized. I was abused. I was insulted. My hopes thrown apart. Man of God, I have gone to the knees. I have gone to the lowest parts. I have served from the bottom of my heart. I gave it my all, and yet I was misunderstood. My actions were misunderstood. My thoughts were misunderstood. I lost it all. All the work I did was thrown away because of one mistake. Yes. Ask Moses. Ask Moses. But yet the Bible said that Moses' body, Moses' body was wrestled by none other else. And hear me carefully. Don't pick a farmer and disobey his instructions. It would not be good for you. It would not help you. I know, I've been there before, where you think that I have given my all and yet it is not seen. I have tried my best and yet it is not seen. But keep trying. Because until you are used... Until you are used, your potential can never be realized. Until you are pressed, the oil in you can never come out. Until you are stretched, your limits can never be known. Take the better lessons as strides to grow better 
to grow stronger. Don't allow your negative experiences to cut you off your farmer. It is better you pick another farmer than sit under one and not listen. It is better you walk away from your farmer than pick a farmer you will not submit to. You do yourself a disservice. I am persuaded that this man in 2 Kings prayed. He prayed. He prayed to God. I'm sure when that man goes to heaven, he has a beef with God and says, God, I pray to you to save my family from poverty. I am a man of God. I'm not even a church member. I'm a man of God. Why do you hear so much? Not hear so God said, you are a seed in Elisha's farm. It is not your voice I hear. It's Elisha I hear. I am not saying that as a seed you shouldn't pray. That's not what I'm saying. But don't disregard the role of the farmer in whose vineyard you've been planted. Don't disregard that role. Because even the Bible tells us men that if you fight with your wife, hear me all. Your prayers will not be answered. <laughs> are, are you listening? Your wife, oh, the Bible said that when you are married, avoid conflict so that your prayers will not be hindered. Look, when you are going for a business contract, the enemy will come and make sure that that night only you have a dispute. Sometimes the enemy can't stop you, he distracts you. When a door is about to open, that is when the enemy will bring dispute between you and your farmer. So that that door will close. If God is willing to hinder the prayer of a married man because of their wife, how much more a seed because of the farmer? If God can hinder the prayers of a husband, trust me, he can hinder the prayers of a seed. Do you think that the children of Reuben didn't pray to God? Do you think so? They did. But it took Moses to say, let Reuben not die. And let his members be few. Why? Because at that time, Moses had taken charge of Reuben. I want to wrap up in two minutes. God heard the sons of Reuben. But God said no. Do you think that Esau could not have prayed to God? That God, my father had betrayed me. My father gave the blessing to Jacob. Because Esau knew God. But the farmer had spoken. God said, I will honor it. God said, if a daughter walks before me and makes a vow and the father comes and say she will not honor it. God said yes. She will not honor it. Why? Because the father's word is stronger than the child. That means that if you pray, hear me, some people don't understand the Bible in certain context. If you pray, and your father prays against it, God will listen to his prayer and cancel your prayer. If you don't agree, then unfather yourself. Can you understand? God said, if you vow to me, you pledge to me. Husbands likewise dwell in the understanding. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Give me the, the, the Bible. I think it's in Deuteronomy or Leviticus. If you vow to me, and you can't honor the vow. If your father comes and says, the father, the father says, she will not. To God, no. The father says, she will not. This vow, my daughter will not honor. God said, I will render it cancelled. I will render it cancelled. Every agreement you have with God, it is subject to your father's approval. If your father says it will not go through, it will not go through. Numbers 30 verse 3. 
or if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house, in her father's house terms or while under the father's authority, while she's a seed, and her father hears the vow and the agreement by which she has found bound herself, and her father holds his peace. Then all the vows shall stand. It means that the prayer you pray to God, if your father or your shepherd agrees, God answers. If he does not, God does not answer. If you don't like it, change the father. That is why <laughs> I, I, I don't want to stress. I'm finishing in two minutes. But if her father overrules on the day that he hears, then none of her vows nor her agreement. By which she is bound herself shall stand. And I the Lord will release her. Because her father. Her father what? Her father what? Her father what? Overruled her. Her father overruled her. The authority of her father. The authority of the shepherd. The authority of the farmer. Overrules even the prayer. Of the seed. So. Don't tell me. Sometimes God is not answering my prayer. Check it. Because if the farmer's heart is against you, no prayer God will answer. God will answer it. Hey, upa kwachire come 90 days fast. Oboa. You can pray. Did you do you know that the Bible didn't say the, the father consulted the daughter? He said if the father hears it, all he needs to do is to hear. And the father prays to God and said, This is my daughter's plea. I refuse it. God said, Your father's word overrules yours. Overrules yours. That is why when Jacob cursed the child, God picked it. Was God happy about this? No. God had blessed Jacob. God had blessed the 12 tribes of Israel. God said, Didn't God say that? He, who blesses you, I will bless. Who curses you, I will curse. Didn't God protect the chain of Israel? So why would God put a blessing on Israel, put a protective measure around them, yet when Jacob cursed, it happened. Why? Because Jacob was a father. He wasn't an outsider. So why didn't God overrule the curse and say, no, Israel cannot be cursed? God said, oh well, Israel cannot be cursed. But if it is cursed by Israel himself, <laughs> then the cash are bound. Are you a seed? Or are you a farmer? Next week, I want to go into the stages of a seed. The stages of a seed. The stages of a seed. Because I want by the time I'm done with this series, you understand why you are where you are. Somebody asked me a question. He said, man of God, how do I know whether I've missed my season and my time? I said, I'll teach it. But if, you don't, if I rush you through, you'll never get it. So today, if I've not taught you anything, I've taught you one thing. One of the reasons why you are not where you ought to be is because you are not under a farmer. You are not under a farmer. Or you are under a farmer you are not listening to. If a man of God can be under another man of God and yet God not answer his prayer and he died in poverty when he had the anointing, the oil to make it. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. You are not above Hallelujah. Stretch forth your hands with me wherever you are. Pray that God will give you the ear to listen to your farmer. The humility and the patience of a seed. Father, grant your people temperance. Grant them patience. Grant them humility to listen to the farmers you have appointed over their lives. Let none of them be lost. 
And let none of them prayers be hindered. Lead them in the way you've appointed to them. And keep them in the places they've been planted. I thank you. In Jesus' name, pray thanksgiving. Amen. Um, as I said last week, take out your momo. Take out your momo. Take out your seed. Take out your offering. If you have it here, please raise it up and bring it forward. We pray that, Lord, as your people give to your work, increase them, bless them, enlighten them, and enable them. In Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. Until next week, same place, same time, I'll continue with seasons and times. I'll let the announcers wrap up. Thank you. Stay blessed and stay safe. Thank you so much, man of God. You are blessed and highly favored. Thank you for listening at home. I know that you were taking some notes. I know that you have learned something. It's always an intense moment during the elite service. The man of God said that the greatest asset a farmer or a father can leave for a child is not a house, it's not a car, but it's an instruction. And as a seed, your test is in your obedience. What instruction have you ignored? Or what instruction are you living by that is helping you? I believe that this morning the man of God has cleared a few things, a few misconceptions for you to know if you are a seed or you're a farmer. I have been blessed. And I know that next week when he continues, you'll be blessed. Please, don't keep this word alone. Invite your friends, invite your loved ones. Let people tune in on Facebook, on Zoom and YouTube and hear this powerful word that is going on here at Bridge Ministries International where lives are switched on. It is still our year of harvest and once you are sowing, you will definitely reap. Please send your offerings, your seeds, your fights to the numbers that will be displayed on the screen. It's our year of harvest. Once you sow, you will definitely reap. The numbers are displayed on the screen. You can send your numbers, you can send your monies, you can send your offerings to that number. We have another wonderful service at 11 a.m. That is our Jesus Addict service or our celebration service. Please invite someone to tune in. 11 o'clock is happening here live at Bridge Ministries International. Your life will be switched on. Invite somebody, invite a friend, someone you haven't heard from in a long time. Please call the person and tell the person that something wonderful is happening here at 11 a.m. At 5 p.m., Relationship 101 will be live. God bless you. It's always an awesome time here at Bridge Ministries. I am blessed and I know you are blessed too. I love you. Stay tuned to our celebration.